Welcome back to the Legacy EV build. Today, we are making a diffuser. Absolute monster. That's massive. This episode is again brought to you by our good friends at Fiberglass. It's been an honor working with them. We started by making a mold. We didn't make a plug and then a mold, we just made a straight mold. Um, we actually had a cameo from my dad. My dad came in and gave us a hand. Um, pretty much just took a day just to like shape out the main shape of the diffuser. Got a piece of flexible like eighth inch plywood. Um, clamped it to the front of the, well, the back half of the flat floor, ramped it up as much as we, you know, could, how, like, whatever, to make it look like the render, and then just braced it with a ton of two by fours. It did look like a skate ramp. Yeah, yeah, it really did look like a skate ramp. There's a pitch to this, so it's not just like a straight diffuser, there's a pitch out. So we had to make extra little side pieces, and then we had to foam them up at the corner. Cause you can't just butt up two pieces and you have like a sharp, even if it's a 45, it's a sharp 45. So we kept the two pieces away from each other and then we foamed it. I used like a great stuff foam first, like the big gap filler, just to make like a little back channel for me. And then we used fiberglass two part, uh, two pound uh, polystyrene foam, I think it is. Is that what you've been using? Yeah, it's like part number 326 and 25, I think, is the two parts, A and B. You just mix them one to one. Yeah, it's the foam I've been using on everything. They have different uh, weights. Like, I think it's the pressure that the foam bubbles push out. So this mm. is the two pound one, so it's the lowest pressure, uh, which I like a lot because it doesn't deform stuff. You can get like the five or six pound, whatever the higher pound one is. It can like really put a lot of pressure on something. If you're doing a really like steel, like steel box or something you're filling, maybe that's not a problem, but. Um, so yeah, we foamed the corners, shaved them down. I used a like drywall saw to do a lot of the cutting. And then we, uh, my dad actually came in the next day too and did a bunch of uh, body work, like finish work on the rounds of the edge of the mold. So it was really nice just going straight from mold to part. You don't have to do plug to mold to part. Instead of making the panel three times, you only make it twice. We hit it with stabilized 3K. If I say, is you know? it a real video? You don't say stabilized carbon fiber? Yeah, hit it with stabilized carbon. We got our nice V-weave, that herringbone. <laughs> Goodness gracious, how many times? <laughs> so I go through all the videos, tell me how many times I said stabilized. You can kind of see where they break up here. There's a line right there. But with gel coat in here, it really stays nice and smooth in the mold. It all turns out great. It's false. So, we then hit it with another uh, layer of just regular 3K, not stabilized for the second layer. And then the Soric Core foam. That foam is really nice because it curves, it can meet a lot of curves, like it's all the way up to the edges here. So we hit the base layer with the foam and then also the, the edges, but right at the actual curve, you can see out here actually. So to right here, this is Soric Core, Soric Core, right to these two things. So this very edge right here does not have foam in it. We also doubled up and added a layer of 12K just on this section. You can kind of see this is the outline of the 12K and then this is the outline of the foam. Yeah. Yeah. So the corners are really nice and stiff. All in all, I think we, and then, sorry, and then we hit it with another layer of 3K and then another layer of 3K stabilized. So it's only four layers of 3K thick plus the foam and the 12K in the corners, which is not that much. It's a very light diffuser, but it is super, it's rock solid. It's not like it'll be all wee wobbly on the highway or anything like that. Yeah, the
think I need a real saw. Yeah, I'm probably. Yeah, Dave does have like a nice blue board. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not sponsored by Ryobi. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, if it was really easy to rip a couple of these, we could cut two more of them. It is. Yeah. The only thing is then it makes it a little harder. Like, we, right now, we could rip a bunch of boards to the thinner of, like, it's gonna, yeah, the problem with this is there's angles on the ends of it which are kind of hard to match, right? Yeah. But we could just kind of, it could be butted up to the front of this, have a gap, and just run screws, who cares? Just be fast. All right, we've already but, a couple of things. So what is your so, Sorry, off? sorry, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I'm following uh, you. If we, were, if we were only gonna run two of these and run them both at the end, what it does make easier is running boards straight across here. Okay. Instead of running three boards across, you're running one. And then we, what we could do with that also is like, once we run the board across the front, we could just run the two by three. Okay, so it's on the angle. We might need to get another sheet of plywood, but let's see if I can get one or two more cut out of this board. A bit yeah. Actually, so we're going to trim some of this bottom. Mark it here. What are we thinking? The back's okay. Yeah, the back, back needs to be needs higher. To come up, so just, yeah. Yeah. Engineering with Tim. And Dan. Okay. Gotta get the formal introduction, Tim. Yeah. What's up? Real power tool. You're the <laughs> I'm really a body man, not a woodworker, but you know. Tim's helper today.
So update on the diffuser. We made a flat panel and then cut these two strakes out. And then we have them matching this angle. And we're just taping them in place so we can run a bead of epoxy along the inside, let that dry, and then we'll hit a bead of epoxy on the other side, finish sanding it, satin clear, call it a day. the width of this. Oh. Okay. Can we get the two bolt holes lined up, which I think they're... Do you want me to... Oh. You need a little belt sander or something? We have the right, we got enough room for the height first, and then we'll figure yeah, it out. Yeah, you, you're holding it? Yeah. Okay, yeah, we still need to get the controls out of the way, but... I just happened to show up here, so I get to be part two of the installation of the piece I helped make. How exciting. This is the, the end of that video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm being recorded right now. I should say something prophetic, or <laughs> pathetic, or... <laughs> I mean, having it open like that is kind of part of the design, right? Like. Yeah. So yeah, like, yeah, it can't yeah. stay like this. I guess you'd want to do that first to see what it feels like. Yeah. Yeah. We can always add these. What about the? You got a something going there? Yeah. Oh, that's oh, that's one piece. So you got to glue them all together and mold it. Uh, glue them together. Um, there's like a hole in the back drill and oh, put LEDs in. Yeah. Yeah. This oh. Is, the other that's same product. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to clear leaves. over it to fill some of these little lines, and then um, we have a red tinted clear, so I'll red tint it. Okay. Send it the wheel and we'll do this one like an even. Very nice. He made it. Cooks really well. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because he did it off a nice scan. That scanner is really great too. It took like all of like five minutes to scan this real. I approve. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah.
Hope you got that audio. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So, we have the car on two 50 pound <laughs> drums right now. Uh, because I can't ever lift the car with the diffuser mounted because the control arms are so freaking huge, they will drop, they'll droop too much and hit the diffuser. So the front pins, Josh welded these little guys up to a button head screw actually. I had these from my Lassie. Um, and what he did was, well yeah, that's really it. <laughs> just just weld it on there. I did all this other janky stuff. It's like it's not janky, it's super legit. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so Techno usually has a, they call it a power brace that bolts in here. Um, so I just picked up on the two bolts that would usually bolt to the power brace in this rear section and used it to mount onto this super sturdy piece of aluminum. Yeah, it's a it's, thick piece of aluminum. Yeah. And I just, I need to wipe off that paint marker there, but yeah. You know. um, so we have these two mounts. They're they're extremely strong. They're on the subframe, so they're not going anywhere. And then up here, crawl under here, we have the two pins, big ass pins that are welded straight to the frame that mount to the front section. And we got this exactly perfect. Like I was under here passing them back and forth to Josh, like, hey, take off like two eighths of an inch on this one and whatever. We were into like three sixteenths or something like that. But, um, so we got these perfectly aligned. And then, so when you click on the floor, it is right here. It's right butted up to this floor and it's at, or slightly above, maybe like 1 16th above the floor itself. So you have a true flat floor. Yeah, you can see from the front of the subframe all the way back through the diffuser will all be a seamless section. And then from here, out where the rockers are, we're building a flat panel that go underneath the rocker too, so that will also be flat. So it's a flat floor, frame rail, carbon floor, pinch weld, carbon floor. <laughs> and yeah, and then we have a huge splitter up front that we just made. And uh, yeah, we need to do more on that, but that's, that'll be later. Let's see. Front clipped in. And yeah, all of them clipped in, I think. Well. Oh, that is all. Look at that. Sold it up to be some difficult task. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. The fuser is on. Nice and sturdy. All of this open space. If we end up having like a problem of like a wobble or something like that, I mean, I'm shaking the entire car, so. It's still kind of on the left side, so maybe not do that, but it's very sturdy. I don't think it's going anywhere. But yeah, seeing this blank space, especially from the side, is such a neat aspect of this build. Most of the design is all about the like cavities. open spaces. Yeah, the cavities. We got that one. We got these are looking at the radiator. We got this here. All that airflow, it's just whew. I'm gonna put some uh, strings back there to see how the air flows when you drive. Yeah, I, we we need to go to a wind tunnel. Everyone, thank you for commenting. Like 20 comments of people like, go to this window, go, go to this wind tunnel. We know this person. Oh, cool. We will definitely look into it. Right now we gotta finish building this car. We have three days. <laughs> this is what our car looks like. <laughs> no more two weeks, no, it's three no days. No more two weeks, it's three days. But yeah. we'll get it, we'll get it, don't worry. We will see you in Vegas. Um, yeah, and on that, I'm really tired. We're going to call this one a day. We will see you in like two more days on Friday.